Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany episode number 57. Excuse me. I made a disappointing discovery. It does not appear that these uh, colonial corvettes are actually counting as colonial. Unless this is a bug in the display, it's showing me here that the tonnage is 900. Now, 20% of 900 it's got to be at least 100, <laughs> so that at least should be reporting a thousand for the tonnage of this ship. Um, I think it's so it may just be misreporting the exact displacement. However, it may not be. It may be reporting the colonial tonnage, and well, that's I mean basically that's not a good thing. So this ship that we have designed, I'm not sure if it's even effective. This Corvette. Uh, that said, we I, I've been neglecting the fact that the Indian Ocean, the South Pacific. And West Africa are all covered by our corvettes, which means that our slickings can move elsewhere. So West Africa, South Pacific, Central Pacific. I'd actually rather them cover the Central Pacific because I believe that the main raiding stuff, I basically want to, them to control the places where I'm not very easily going to access. Um, so maybe even West Africa is not a good choice. I'd rather... Okay, so let's see. We'll just do it one by one. Northern Europe, fine. Mediterranean, fine. Western Africa is close enough to Europe that I think we should just put a cruiser there. Maybe a cruiser and a couple of corvettes to get us over the tonnage requirement. Indian Ocean, I do agree with using the corvettes. Um, Southeast Asia, that's another place where I'd rather deter raiders. Northeast Asia, I would, I would like to use the corvettes. Um, the Caribbean, also close enough that I could use cruisers. South Pacific is definitely a Oh, we don't even have tonnage requirements for southern... Oh. These must be moving or something. So let's not use anybody in the central Pacific then. Let's get these guys to the south Pacific, which is 5,000. So we want south Pacific, 5,000. Didn't we already have those covered? We do. So south Pacific is covered. Indian Ocean is covered, which is good. I, I do want the, that area covered. So the, other, the only other place then is actually... Well, I could leave these guys in Western Africa and just add enough Corvettes to cover Northeast Asia. Let's start moving the light cruisers around so that we can actually see, first of all, get everyone to reserve fleet who can. Uh, then, oh shoot, I did control A, which means that all these guys who should actually be on mothball have been unmothballed but we'll mothball them again now uh, the last thing i wanted to do is yeah go to the cruisers and if they're in west africa which they are move them to southeast asia oh boy why does it do that okay good so at least i can find it very quickly because it's the only thing moving right now central pacific also another area we just want this one to move south southeast asia Oh boy. And Caribbean is good. That I actually want them there. South Africa, let's move you to the Caribbean as well. Let me see, I want to set up my foreign stations with active fleet people. And Northeast Asia is not bad. It's a I think we actually need a lot of tonnage there. Yeah, but we don't even have enough yet. Uh huh. Okay, so we'll, we'll let this West Africa one go. We'll get the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific. And if we want to build any other ones, they should go to Northeast Asia. Hmm. Another thing we were doing actually was sending some of our minesweepers. The brat versals, that's right. We were sending a few of these. I mean, they're mothballed. They're down to actually one maintenance, which is incredible. But uh, I think that we'd actually rather have some of them going into Southeast Asia. I guess it really depends on what foe we're going to fight next. And then we'll, we'll get these Bockenheims to deploy in a reasonable manner at some point. But for now... Yeah, what I'd like to do is get all the light cruisers squared away, so I do not want any of the light cruisers 
on Foreign Station, and they are not right now, which is fine. Which is, you know, not more than fine, it's very good. And the slick teams are actually going to be perfectly okay to cover the Foreign Station's areas, I think. So, everyone's interested in our technology, but we'll keep selling it. I think it is time to upgrade our docks, at least another bump. It's pretty expensive, but we have the money right now. Seems like a good time to do it right before we're about to build our, possibly our, our end game, our last final. It's 1938. Just good to remind ourselves, we're getting towards the end game. And that really screams to me, actually, that we need to keep working on these uh, Rhineland class refits. Um, so I haven't gotten any comments. Uh, basically, I just released that episode maybe a couple hours ago. I haven't gotten any comments on the carrier design yet. So I'm going to have to wing it, unfortunately. We know that we're going to take uh, the 3-inch guns out. This is, like, mandatory. The 4-inch dual-purpose guns are still pretty good. Uh, but I think I do want to go up to the 5-inch ones. I actually completely forgot the whole min-max dilemma here. We just take it down by one aircraft? What, what was the problem here? 98 seems just fine to me. Um, what is the problem? All okay, okay, so now we just start adding this. I guess we're not, we're gonna very quickly run out of tonnage available. So what do we do? Oh, the question is what, do we drop another aircraft? I, I think yes. Because it seems like we're going to run out of space before we run out of ability to do guns. I mean, from a maintenance perspective, I like this decision better, actually. Oh, okay, we're actually over here. Um, what was the more efficient way to do this? I think it's more uh, light guns are slightly more space efficient. Uh, drop, increase. There we go. Perfect. Jeez, that worked out really well and holy cow you know look i don't know what we were doing before but all i know is i really like what i'm seeing here okay we'll get these things refitted on them oh that's what i was asking about whether or not to bulge them that is an interesting question three knots i don't think i want to do it because i'm actually really happy with this thing the way it is now it's got great AA, it's got great everything, and I was thinking about it, I mean, there is obviously the argument that these things, <clears throat> these things need to be able to avoid combat still, so they, need, they do need to move 28 knots. The only problem with this 28 knots thing, the, the only problem is when they are deploying aircraft, which is, yeah, I mean, it happens, right? They have to deploy aircraft, and towards the end of the battles, they seem to be doing it almost constantly. They're moving flank speed in, let's just say, in the worst case scenario, exactly the wrong direction. We almost want the speed to be lower in that case so that their flank speed, which we cannot control, is in the right direction. I mean, at least slower in the wrong direction. So, I misspoke there for a second, but but the question is, what would we get? So let's just, hypothetically, we're, we're like sitting very happy, 31, 25, 97 aircraft, very happy. We lost, what, two aircraft? for a great overhaul in the in the anti-aircraft capabilities of this ship. If we bulge, we do go down to 25 knots, which is still not slow. We get 500 displacement, which we probably bump into three aircraft, get up to 100, and we really don't have anything else to do other than maybe add just a crap ton of ammunition, which is really unnecessary. So, so, I mean, the question is, what what else would we do with this? Well, we're redoing the... We, we could actually increase the turret armor. Oh, wow. So this, as far as I know... Yeah, it does not... Because we're changing the guns already, we, we might as well just change the turrets. This is just going to make them a little more resilient. I don't know if it really works or... 
it's all in my head. I kind of like this though. I, I actually, I do think we will end up doing this, which will, instead of losing uh, two aircraft, we'll gain one aircraft. We'll gain insane, really insane capabilities. They will be slower at 25 knots. Now, I am trying to think, if this was real life, I would not do this. So we're already gaming the game. And let me explain that for a second. Um, if this was real life, I would do, I would, you know, the carriers would be under your control or like, you know, the speed three knots would be huge in order to pursue enemies in order to, um, I don't know, you would just want this speed available for like even just movement around. Not, you would never go flank out moving around, but you know, in an emergency, okay, we need to get out over here quickly. Uh, I can't explain that very well by talking about real life. What I can do it, it's easier for me to just explain why this is not necessary in the game. In the game, you're put into a deployment position not knowing how that battle occurred, how we came into contact with the enemy. It's kind of a, it seems like it's assumed most cases that you just run into the enemy, which is not normally how it would happen, at least now getting to the time frame when airplanes are scouting and stuff and radar and radio communications with other ships and all that. Uh, you would not normally just randomly encounter, uh, I mean, it's, it happens at night, it definitely did happen still, but it was, uh, definitely didn't, ha it wasn't 100% of the battles, which is the way it is in World Waves, it seems. Um, you would encounter them. You would your scout your scout planes would find them. Obviously, Midway is the, the biggest example of this. Uh, not only that, Coral Sea. I mean, the, all the carrier big carrier battles that I know of. It's it's not the ones where it was carrier versus carrier. At least, well, oftentimes were uh, with scout planes detecting the enemy. So that's not something which I've seen abstracted in this game. You're just, when you're put into a battle situation, obviously, you know the enemy's there. The game isn't going to spawn a situation where, so, um, I don't know if that justifies my decision to lower the speed, but it seems to make the speed less valuable, because you're already in a situation where your speed is kind of only used to, per, like, close or to flee, but it can't be done, it, it can only be done in the span of, like, minutes um, before you encounter the enemy. It's not something where you can position, you're not doing the whole positioning battle, you're not uh, moving quickly to get it somewhere. I don't know. They're like other situations where you might need this higher speed, they're not. Nest, they're not like a abstracted into the game. It's not that a lower speed, as far as I know, at least. It's not that lower speed gives you a worse chance to start. You know, with the wind in the right direction or something, which that might be the case in real life. Okay, enough about that. So I'm. I am. Look. I am feeling very happy with this and 100 is the limit where you don't get penalties so i plan to make all my ships around 100 i'd rather have more carriers at 100 than less carriers with more aircraft capability or capacity so we'll get that one in fact we probably could split i mean we'll do them one at a time well it's 12 months we can't do them one at a time okay so that's fine we'll get to the air groups we'll go over to the u it's gonna be pretty clear that there's gonna be an exact group that goes to, I mean, it's, I just split them. I get, if there's four 16s, two go to one, two go to the other. So we'll get the big Z. I think that's the one I just did. Just want to make sure. Yeah, big Z. Otherwise the air crew are scrapped. So you don't want to do that. We'll rebuild you. And that is a really nice refit. I'm just so happy with that one. I think we still have Valkyries coming out. Oh no, Valkyries are actually done now. Okay, good. So we can refit them. How many do we have? After losing three of them to submarines and other things, mines, I don't know what it was, but uh, I think we lost three. We only lost two. Okay, that's right. The one that hit the mine were actually recovered. So two, we lost to submarines, but we still have eight to play with, which is really nice. I also want to rebuild these because... Do I? They're actually perfect as is. You're perfect just the way you are. I know, I know. It, you guys, you all heard the joke coming, but... Ah, man, I'm, I am really can't wait to actually use this thing in battle. I, I'm still really, really a big fan of it. First of all, the dual-purpose guns here really do serve a nice dual-purpose role. Um, if we come up against destroyers, these things... I mean, four-inch guns aren't going to sink a destroyer quickly, but we're able to 
really a target two destroyers at the same time and 12 four inch guns is obviously nothing that a destroyer is going to sneak like just shrug off and we do have a little bit of AA position stuff available only a very little bit <laughs> why is why is that checked i don't understand one medium gun worth is not probably enough to even warrant doing it. I know that we have six inch dual purpose guns. I've asked this question to somebody in the comments, but really I, I should be asking it to everyone. As far as I know, for some reason, four and five inch dual purpose guns are the most effective uh, in game. I think that's according to the manual. Four and five, they say something like four and five inch guns are particularly effective. It seems to imply that six inch guns, six inch dual purpose guns are not as effective. Uh, I know I talked about the Omaha last episode, but wonder how less how much less effective they are because i am currently i mean obviously that was the discussion with the uh uh what was it with this is uh, what are they blukers i wasn't exactly sure what would be going on with those so you guys are you needed on you're not so that's it the laugh of the the last of the nice nows is now going to be scrapped Oh, so you were lying to me. That I did actually. Well, with the the one Zolorns are back, so that's that's fine. We'll get two to move immediate. What? What the heck? Yeah, we'll get two. I would say to move to Southeast Asia, where that's their, you know, supposedly going to be their final resting place at this point. We'll put one on foreign stations just to satisfy this requirement, and we'll keep letting the Schlichtings go into position. So we should have two in the Caribbean, two in Southeast Asia, and two in Northeast Asia. That's perfect. And the Valkyries can cover West Africa and Northern Europe. I mean, thinking about it that way, I probably would rather have the Schlichtings cover West Africa, but West Africa is not, it's actually already covered from foreign tonnage requirements, right? So Southeast Asia is what we're missing and we're getting a Owen Zorlorn over there. Northeast Asia is just barely not enough, and I think we have one more ship heading that way as well. No. Let's look at the areas. Indian Ocean, West Africa. So West Africa, we have too much, but probably because we have a cruiser there. Indian Ocean. I, I think this is actually just these ships. Is anybody else in the Indian Ocean? I know I can sort by location, but then you ruin your nice ordering of, every, of everything. Yes, somebody is in the... Okay, so... Let's get these guys off of... Let's put them on active duty. Does this... Yeah, so it didn't change anything. Okay, good. Bucket times, I'm still going to keep them around. They're 20... I, I guess what I want to do is move them into Southeast Asia as well. Northeast Asia, perfect. Let's move more into Northeast Asia. I don't want them in the Caribbean because I, I suspect that that's gonna be an actual battle zone. So let's get them to Northeast Asia. I don't know what, the screen keeps jumping all over the place whenever you tell somebody to do something. Central Pacific, not a place where we really need to keep anybody because although it's possible for, I mean, there's invasions and stuff, which can happen only if we go up against the US, right? I think they still have Hawaii, right? Yeah, I mean, let's just take a look at things. Uh, we only have to worry about Hawaii there. Uh, we do want Northern, Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia very heavily guarded. We actually want South Pacific heavily guarded as well. So that's another possible destination for the Bakkenheims. In fact, South so you're in Northeast Asia, you're going to Northeast Asia. Let's get uh, these to South, the South Pacific. Where'd you go? It's funny, because if you're at the top, it scrolls you to the bottom, but if you're at the bottom, it does actually scroll you to the top. So that's something that does not make sense about that. Get these guys out of the Caribbean, move them to South Pacific as well. But now that I know what's going on, at least I can kind of try to work with it. 
Let's get you to South Pacific. And West Africa, not necessary. We'll move you to South Pacific just because I'm just going to put them all over there and we'll figure out where they should actually go once they're there. And South Pacific was or was not. Nope, we're actually satisfying the tonnage requirements, but instead of using the minesweepers there, we might move the minesweepers up to Northeast Asia, or at least some of them. Let's actually do that immediately. Let's move three of them up to Northeast Asia, because I would like minesweeping capability in Northeast Asia. So maybe not three, well, it's too late. I already did it. That's fine. Okay, next turn. Uh, yes, because I don't think deck edge lifts work. Or do they? They do work. This is sensitive information. Gradual improvement in rate of fire by getting improved power rammers. Do we get, we didn't get automatic loading, right? No, I didn't see it. It's still grayed out. We'll send a diplomatic note. Who are the people who I want to go to war with, by the way? I'm already prepping in my head a war with Italy, a war with Russia, a war with Japan. Great Britain's obviously there too. I mean, basically anybody but the United States. I don't think we really have much more to gain from the United States. They, we've actually taken most of their colonies. Uh, this is a new model. It does not show me the old one. So we'll just go to the aircraft types and see what happened. It was a flying boat, right? Was it a torpedo bomber? I don't remember. Flying boat is being requested. Maybe that's what I saw. So this is probably what we have, this torpedo bomber. Oh, it looks pretty good. Three, five. Wow, that's terrible maneuverability. Mm, one, two, three, five is faster. Lower maneuverability, lower firepower. Average instead of good. <clears throat> range is about the same, so I'm not going to worry about that. And their range is very long. Basically, it's do we want the five extra speed? Speed can be important. I mean, obviously, it's the distance they're moving on the map as well. So we get some there and get some back faster. However, I think the reliability is more important. I'm going to leave them both for now, but I'll probably have them still stick with our original torpedo bomber. Better firepower, better maneuverability, not as good of toughness, but maybe we're just overdue for a torpedo bomber, but flying boat, excuse me, flying boat, medium bomber, and then we can start going back to the combat aircraft. By the way, off camera, I did reduce the squadrons down to one again, and I think that we're going to eventually start doing 20 flying boats, 10 media bombers, and actually 10 fighters, just so there's some cap over these bases um, I don't know if that's important or not, but I don't know. It makes sense to me, at least. Still plenty of money. Oh. I think this was like an emergency maneuver. Let's get you guys back to... Actually, I won't mind having a few of these in the Caribbean. Three in the Caribbean and one. Uh, move this one back to northern, yeah, northern Europe. Wow, twenty submarines. That's a lot. Uh, Japanese government wants some kind of subdivision and damage control. We'll take it. More powerful compressed air ejection. Central line torpedo tubes allowed on ships up to thirty-five hundred tons. Very nice. Basically, they're able to launch a little further. <laughs> so we can put them on the center and they can actually fly over the rest of the hole. Not that big of a deal, in my opinion. But still. Uh, with all the money, we could actually start building up more of our submarine force. And I think I will. We're building the docks. Um, I also think we should be getting... I feel like we don't have... Probably the, we, do these guys all have their protection? Batteries one. So in Guantanamo, Haiti, and Puerto Rico need the, wow, that's a lot of batteries in Puerto Rico. Let's look at the bases, coastal fortifications, that's right. 
Um, let's sort this by location. So Haiti, Guantanamo Bay only has an airbase, so that one needs two. Build two in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, that worked nicely. Okay, then we want Haiti has two air bases, <clears throat> so she also needs fortifications. Um, next up, we have Puerto Rico, who has the two six inch guns already. Perfect. And Venezuela, I guess, next. Guantanamo, Haiti, Puerto Rico. And then, yeah, Venezuela needs two six inch guns as well. And I don't think Venezuela has anything else. She probably could use, let's kind of zoom in and see what her situation is. So I'd like Puerto Cabello. Puerto Cabello. to have, no, sorry, air base, an air base, no, yeah, air base, that's right, let's get one of those as well, okay, I think that's all I want to do this turn, I guess that some of the ships are starting to go where they ought to go. Um, are you needed still? You are, but only by negative 34. We're getting close. Foreign station that again. So we're getting very close. What is the, where are we slacking? Uh, Southeast Asia, and that's where the Hohenzollerns will be very soon, so we're in good shape. I know that the Hohenzollerns, by the way, are still stuck in North Northern Europe, where we absolutely don't want them, but I do want them there uh, just so I can keep them on reserve fleet. In fact, <laughs> who are we kidding? Whoops. These guys will get mothballed because they were not supposed to be a fighting force whatsoever. So they're very cheap when they're mothballed. <laughs> yeah, send a diplomatic note. Okay, it looks like the fighter squadrons can re equip with the better fighters. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> Didn't really build enough subs. I think that we want to win the next one with submarines because it'll probably be the last submarine battle that we can fight. <clears throat> How many are we going to have now? That's only 80. Let's go even bigger. That's uh, 100. Well, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll leave it at 100. I mean, the reliability of these guys is 97. That's really good news. I'm really happy to see that. That's really good. Jeez. Get another 10. Because that'll probably be the last fight we use with submarines. I do like it when the, the war is dragging on. It can get us. It can help us get to a, a good place in the bargaining table. Brat Verstals, where do we want you guys? You're the only short range, I think you're the only short range we have left. It's for destroyers. Yeah, okay, so that's, it's actually fine if you end up staying in Northern Europe because you'll just be a very good uh, mine sweeping force in Northern Europe. Also with mines or not? Four mines, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Okay. The Rhinelands have finished. We'll have to swap out the next two. Mm, yeah. Okay, good. Good. This is the exciting thing. All right. These are all faster than our original one. They all have firepower of six. They have maneuverability of three or two. Toughness of 14 on this one, which is pretty good. Two 1,000 pound bombs. I do like this. I'm going to immediately eliminate the bottom one. Look at I don't know if it's true. I guess it's not. But 
I kind of like the idea of two 1,000 pound bombs more because I feel like your chances of hitting are better. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it works in the game, but you know, in my head it is. Insane range on, well, this one and this one. This is also the fastest. So, pro and it has the highest toughness. I think we have found our winner. Fastest, insane range at this point. Um, low maneuverability, which is only the only bad thing, but firepower of six, toughness of 14, two medium bombs. I like everything about it. It's getting the, it's getting the bid. You've won the bid. Now that is, by the way, you, I think this is the one that wasn't on active, that was on active duty from the Gluckstads. Anyway, um, let's go to, this was the, by the way, this is the one from the British battle way back in the early 1900s, before even 1910, I think one that was able to kind of disrupt the British fleet and really helped us uh, snowball that into a big victory. What was I going to... I just got distracted by that comment. Oh yeah, yeah, so I want to go to aircraft... I want to go to aircraft types, but first I want to see if I can do this. Can I just get these guys to, instead of moving to reserve, can I move them to the Rhineland? Because this is going to make it so I have less micromanagement. It's a little janky still. I don't really understand that, but... Okay, and that should leave us one aircraft left. Where would we want to put this aircraft? I think into the dive bombers? We're kind of at the point where I think we should be doing 15, 13... Well, we could do 15, 13, 13, which will give us more fighters, but we're doing three torpedo bombers. Are those still the most effective? I honestly do think so. Yes. They have been absolutely the most effective, but it would be nice to have more dive bombers. Maybe I can kind of... <clears throat> Let's think about this. Let's. Uh, we could play with the numbers a little bit, right? I think we'll end up creating a new dive bomber group. <laughs> okay, actually, the bigger groups are better from the sense that um, it's less... Hmm, I don't know. I haven't well thought about this, so I'm actually just going to leave it for now. We'll do the same thing with the era. Era. Move you over to Big Z. There we go. Okay, so that means the Nordrhein Westphalen and the Era are ready to be refit. And let's, I, I, I can't wait to see this ship, by the way. Her speed's down to 24. It said it would only subtract three knots, it subtracted four. I'm not, like, this is again not too big of a deal for the same reasons I was already talking about, that we don't really need these to be going that fast. Sometimes going slower is better since they're going slower in the wrong direction. <laughs> but I don't understand this exactly. I don't know if this is a bug or something I missed. What the hell? They're supposed to have these things. I guess these absolutely don't do anything because you just check them at will, and then they're checked. Okay, so these just don't do anything, which is weird. They're just check marks. We can check, and doesn't matter. Although it does actually increase the cost, so that's a little bit funny. I'm uh, a little bit annoying. Okay, so we need a new carrier. We need a new battleship. We need lots of new things. We probably need a new carrier first, though. Well, okay, we still have four carriers, five carriers, one which would go to the Southeast Asia when tensions rise, and four which we just probably still split two and two. I like that, div that kind of division. 
I haven't had more than two fleet carriers in a group yet, so I wonder if there's something, like maybe there's even something against having more than two uh, carriers operating as pairs. But probably that's just, I mean, that's the experience I had from my Japanese streams. Huh. Sturmbringers probably need to be refit though. I think we need to upgrade their guns from five inch guns. I didn't. I do not like their guns uh, being five inches. So this was always planned for a refit, I believe. Take that up. Wow, that is hideous. <laughs> okay, I wish I didn't see that, but I do. Take their light AA down. They should have AA directors. They now do. Get this up. And there we go. 22, 27, 4. I don't even know what we did, but it worked out perfect. Everything's okay. Welcome, Sturmbringer. <laughs> what a behemoth, man. It's still an amazing, amazing ship. Really an amazing ship. She's at 25 knots, yeah, so... Um, I want to do this exactly, but, so I'm going to cancel this rebuild and then redo it with only three at a time. This is just my way of making sure we don't lose this 25 speed. I, I feel like sometimes the game gets bugged. If you don't have one ship still out with the higher speed, but that did happen with the Rhinelands. That's weird. Very strange to me. I don't. I don't really understand it. Anyway, we'll get the other three Sturmbringers as soon as one of the old Sturmbringers comes out. And that's a really good ship, so pretty happy about that. Um, budget, intention, or prestige? Yeah. The steel industry wants a stronger navy. Well, we could use the budget, we can use the tensions. We have quality negative one 19 inch guns now. Ah, the new fighter, the Junkers JU-242 is ready for operational service. Huh. Was I looking at aircraft types recently? Medium bombers. We have two flying boats. Yeah, this is no contest. Obsolete you. Two fighters, which are pretty close together. This one has more firepower, more maneuverability, just less speed, which means I probably want to request another one to solve, to basically do be the tiebreaker. Dive bombers we need, and... Let's get the tie let's get the dive bombers next. No no medium bombers, that's right. Medium bombers. Um range, I think. Range and then probably bomb load and range. Range, bomb load. Seems to make sense to me at least. Do the foyer truckers need to be rebuilt at all? Probably yes. Hmm. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're still a very good class. The only thing I dislike about them, which I dislike a lot about them, is the fact that they have torpedo defense too. Now, if we lose the battle cruiser um, designation, we won't. I don't know if we'll get them in the scout role, and I do like having them in the scout role. But do I really? It's funny. I'm reconsidering this. Do I really need them? I don't know. Hmm. 216, combat radius 166, so we... Firepower 2, wow, so we're doing much better than Japanese. Ooh, the Soryu's completing with 55 aircraft. Okay, that's good. We'll, we're still pretty compa uh, competitive against her. I mean, not just competitive, we're doing much better. She went with the 16 5-inch guns. Probably, I don't... They are not dual purpose, in fact. Maybe we should take a swing at the Japanese while... They're just getting their carrier, you know, uh, fleet stuff going. It'd be nice to hit them before they develop a really strong carrier group. 
Ah, early surface search radar. Enable search, surface search radar, search radar one. So as far as I understand, these will generally be put on our ships. We do want to improve air launch torpedoes. I thought we already researched that though. Lots of confusing things. <sighs> okay, so six more months till we have the better dock size. These are done. Slickings, they might need to be refit. How are you guys doing? What would you benefit from? Not much. So I think we ride these until they get obsolete, which is unfortunately only in three more years. Valkyrie's gonna be fine. Came out in 1935, so she's still only three years old. The oldest of them. Carriers are all getting refits. Stormbreakers are getting refits. Blueguards are getting refits. Four year drakas will get refits soon, but they're 1932, that's not too bad. I mean, I don't know if there's anything we need to do. 81, yeah, we need to adjust that, okay. Probably what we ought to do, well, I think it's actually fine. We'll just do something like this. Okay, we're slightly overweight, but we are getting more dual purpose guns. I like that. Or we could just be satisfied with four dual purpose ones. Thirteen two. Thirteen two. Yeah, this worked out well. So, uh, it gave us a few more of these secondaries. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's still a good battlecruiser. I don't think I want to reclassify it as a battleship. It does give us the extra points, extra two points each. But what's the harm in classifying it as a battleship? Uh, I want to figure out if it can still be deployed as a... I actually am going to do this, because I want to see if it can still be deployed as a um, scout battlecruiser ow crap um so hey, let's i don't think it will be but let's just experiment with it let's do it so save rebuild and we'll rebuild these three it's gonna be very expensive but we have the money right now it's a good time to do it if ever again i'll do the a hold three in reserve battleship don't really want tensions with Great Britain yet. Yeah, naval aircraft is good. Very low, as I hope it would be. Yeah, so I did a lot of this work off camera. Put everything down to one, two, or maybe three. Yep, pretty obvious. This is one carrier group. This is another. We have an extra fighter. Oh, I see. This is this is the end of the first one. This is the beginning of the second. Just had it slightly off. Researcher medium bomber. Let's go ahead and bring this episode to a close here. Kind of a nice resting point. Um, not really sure. I feel like I'm a little bit adrift without uh, a direction towards home port. Oh, look, the radar is starting to appear. That's wonderful. So this first one is search radar. The second is fire control radar, which we don't have unlocked yet, but that's really cool. I can't wait to see that in action. Yeah, anyways, for now, we'll wrap this one up. Until the next video, thanks for watching, and take care.